When it comes to actually experiencing the Holy Spirit, unfortunately, there are those who want to mimic this experience. Or they want to bring an experience that they claim is from the Holy Spirit. However, what they're doing is preaching another spirit. Over in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 4, we see that there are those who will actually bring a different Jesus in a different spirit. For indeed, if one comes proclaiming a different Jesus whom we did not proclaim, or do you receive a different spirit which you did not receive, or a different gospel that you have not accepted? You see, experiencing the Holy Spirit is a logical response from us as we identify and seek to fulfill the desires of the will of God. We seek to live out who we are in Christ. This type of a relationship is actually new. It did not exist with humans prior to the creation of the church. The creation of the church made a big significant difference in the way we actually relate to God. This new relationship that we have requires us to pay attention to our desires and understand where they come from so we can identify what are the desires from God and stop being manipulated by the flesh and Satan. John chapter 14 and verse 17 says, The Spirit of truth, whom the world does not have the ability to receive because it cannot watch him, nor experientially know him, but you experientially know him because he abides alongside you, and will be in you. This is what Jesus told the disciples on the night that he was going to be crucified, because as a result of his resurrection, there was going to be a new type of relationship. The Holy Spirit was no longer going to just abide with them. He was going to be in them. Now, because we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit now, that is, we of the church, we have a different type of a relationship with God. Now, unfortunately, they're going to be those today who are going to come and they're going to teach what is contrary to the truth. They're going to try to make our relationship with the Holy Spirit something that is based upon emotions or experience, and it really doesn't have anything to do with the truth. Remember, truth is seeing things as they really are. Truth is not relative. Truth is not based upon our emotions, or it, it does not change because we don't like the truth. The truth is reality, and we need to keep that in mind. Now, as we read through Scripture, we actually see God interacting with people in many different ways, and perhaps sometimes we would actually even like to experience the same thing. He spoke with them. He showed them signs. He performed incredible miracles. He raised the dead. He healed the sick, and so many other direct, visible manifestations of who he is. However, this is not the type of relationship that we actually have with God today. The type of relationship that we have is one that is far more genuine, and we have a closeness with God that no other humans have actually been able to enjoy. When we fail to actually understand this, we then have false teachers who are going to come in and they're going to try to take advantage of this, advantage of our lack of understanding. These are the ones who we're going to see today manifested in saying that they're prophets, because there are no prophets today. We have the complete revelation. There are also ones who are going to claim to be speaking in tongues. They speak actually in gibberish and pay attention to what they're doing because they ignore what Scripture actually says. Speaking in tongues was a spiritual gift, and its purpose was assigned to the Jews. It is no longer active today. So anybody claiming to be one who speaks in tongues has actually received a different spirit. That's not the Holy Spirit. Along with this, we have those who claim to be healers, and they can make signs, and they receive messages from God. All of this actually is completely contrary to what Scripture says and how we actually relate to God today and experience the Holy Spirit. But they ignore that. There are even those today who want to teach that there's two baptisms. There's a baptism by water, and there's a baptism by fire. And if you're not baptized by fire, that is what they're saying is by the Holy Spirit, then you're not actually saved. Or you're not as good of a Christian as one who is baptized. But the reality is, Scripture says there is one baptism. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. One body, one spirit, just as also you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one spirit, one baptism. That is one immersion. 
When we believe that Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again on the third day, the Holy Spirit immerses us into the body of Christ. That is the immersion he's talking about. That immersion also involves the Holy Spirit indwelling us. God does not speak to us today in a still, quiet voice. God does not actually give us dreams and visions. God doesn't do signs and wonders among us so that we can know that it's him. But do not think that God is not interacting with us in a way today where we can actually understand that it is him and know that that's what he wants for us. He actually is. What God is actually doing today impacts us at our very core. That is our heart because he impacts our desires. He gives us desires to do what is right. He gave us the ability to understand spiritual things by giving us a renewed mind. And therefore, we can actually discern what his desires are for our lives, every aspect of our lives. These are, of course, are not desires that we should take lightly. Because remember, desires that are good are not something that comes from the human nature. What our human nature wants is to do things that are wrong, do things that lack in character. Because all of us have gone astray. It continually all day long seeks to perform what is wrong. There are none that seek God. There are none that do kindness. All have gone astray. Romans chapter 3 and verse 12. So today, he teaches us how to abide in the salvation that we have, how to live out this life in freedom that we have in Christ. Being free so that we are able to live a righteous life before him. Not a lifestyle relying upon sight or actually feelings for that matter but one that is based upon the truth and one that is seeing things as they really are. One that is lived out from faith. Romans chapter 1 and verse 17, the just will live out from faith, taking God at his word. This type of a lifestyle brings peace that is an unruffledness of mind. Yeah, when the whole world has fallen apart, we can be at peace in our mind because the reality is, is we know who God is and we know what he's doing. And we can have that peace. This type of a lifestyle is one that understands because it sees things as they really are. This type of life experiences God with the relationship that we have by walking in the light. And this is the type of life that we have in Christ. Do you want to experience the Holy Spirit? Listen to the good desires that you have. Listen and obey them. And when we do this, we will experience God in every aspect of our life. We really do not need God to actually speak to us. We don't need him to show signs and wonders, give us visions with how he's interacted with humans prior. And the reality is history shows us that even though he interacted with humans in those ways, in very visible ways, we still rejected him. We still ended up walking away from him. Today, we abide in Christ and Christ abides in us. Therefore, we actually experience God in a completely different way than those in the Old Testament. We now have a connection to God with our rational part. That's our spirit. We can understand spiritual things. He guides us through knowing the truth and teaching us how to discern each situation so that we can do what is right, that we can mature. We're not ones under law. We're ones under grace. We don't live our life under bondage of the law. We live our life in freedom by properly discerning what is the right direction for us to go, what is righteous. We are able to mature and no longer garrisoned around by law. Rather, because of our relationship with God, we are actually able to live a life of righteousness by using the renewed mind that we have, through which we can truly understand what God's desirous will is for us in every aspect of our life. This is experiencing the Holy Spirit.